Hey guys, Ultra Maximus official merchandise is now available on my Spring Store. Help support the channel and shop by clicking the link below. Oh, hey, look, it's Evil RC. I'll give you that one. Hey guys, Ultra Maximus back with another toy review, and today we're going to take a look at another Transformers figure from Transformers Rise of the Beasts. It's the Jungle Mission 3-pack set, the Target exclusive for the new movie, and uh, today we're going to take a look at Nightbird out of this 3-pack. I found this at my local Target, and I think this is the only way you can get these guys as of right now in deluxe figures. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging. So here we have the figures in the packaging. Uh, we've got this open box that I do not like. Uh, we've got the free pack, the Transformers Rise of the Beasts figures up in little hexes. And then we've got the artwork down here at the bottom of the Transformers. Uh, side of the package has the Buzzworthy a Bumblebee artwork because of the Target exclusive sets. And then here we have Bumblebee himself. Uh, so just kind of some artwork. Pictures, I guess, of the figures and robot mode. And here are the figures in the box. We've got Bill Jack right there, Nightbird, and Shore. Kind of cool. And then uh, a couple of the weapons, the paper wraps. And then here's uh, some artwork of uh, the characters from the game. And close up to this side, we both go to the artwork. Back of the package has uh, robots and alternate modes for all three of the characters. So just kind of close up. We've got Cheetor, Nightbird, and we've got Real Jack, or as I like to call him, Top So yeah, that's about it for the package. Let's get Nightbird out of box and see what we think. So here we have Nightbird out of the packaging, and it's an okay figure for a deluxe figure. I mean, she kind of looks like she does in the movie. Uh, it feels a pretty decent solid. Now the paint is totally, like, the color scheme is totally wrong from what we got in the movie. I don't know why we have all this brown. It should just be all gray and black and plastic and purple, but uh, yeah, is what it is. She does have two weapons. She's got her sword and her claw weapon. So let's take a look at the sword first. So we get this really nice katana type weapon with this metallic purple paint and holes. I definitely did that. Pretty cool. And then she also comes uh, with a little claw weapon right here on the forearm that can actually uh, be removed and put into her hand as well. Articulation. Her head is on a bulge. Right? It goes up and down around pretty decently. She's got a twist at the waist. Uh, she's got a ball socket at the top of the shoulder. She's got a twist at the Elbow. Legs kick that far forward, they get that far back, and then they split out pretty easily. Uh, we get a double knee joint, which is kind of weird. That's really the transformation. And then uh, there's a little joint at the foot of the toes, and she's got that crazy evil rocker pit we love! With this being her widest possible stance, with both feet still flat on the ground. Now, taking a closer look at the figure itself, the head sculpt's pretty good. I like the color scheme on the head sculpt. I like the purples and the dark grays and the yellows and the silvers. I don't like the brown. That totally destroys Nightbird's color scheme that we see in the movie and we have seen her over the past four years. Um, the sculpt, again, okay. It just really detracts with this brown color, unfortunately. Taking a look at the midsection of the figure, again, I like the metallic purples, the blacks, the grays, that all looks really good. Her skirt on the side actually works really, really well. I like the engineering in that, especially in robot mode. I like her little claw weapon and her sword. I think that looks nice. And uh, again, the purple metallic looks phenomenal. The brown, not so much. 
And finally, taking a look at the legs of the figure, she actually stands really well with these tiny little feet. That is very surprising. I like the wheels on the side of the feet. That metallic purple just really pops, and it doesn't hamper or stand at all. So really good engineering in the feet. The paint with the brown, yeah, not so good. For comparison, here we have the Target exclusive Rise of the Beast Nightbird with the Target exclusive Rise of the Beast Scorponok. And as you can see, they're about the same size. However, I will say vastly different figures. And I think overall engineering of Nightbird is a little bit better. But honestly, I think Scorponok's a lot more fun to actually do. Now, transformation on this figure can be a little complex here. So, first thing we're going to do is remove her weapons. We're going to use the blazer. Take it off. And uh, what we're going to do next is we put her shoulder pad down and like that. Then we want to lift the car head up over her head. Lift it down a little bit. And this hood. And we want to push it back up through. And this is going to catch so that you've got the car looking this. Then you want to straighten out the arms a bit, and then we are going to fold them inward to get the wheels lined up. Fold them in like this, and these will flop around and you're going to transform it. Uh, you want uh, the supports to be outward, you get the, these pegs facing out, then you'll put the doors into those. And then what we want to do next is pull in the feet. And then we're going to pull the skirt piece outward. So we're just going to pull it out on its peg like that. There. And then, yeah, it's going to go outward. And then what you want to do is take the feet and you're going to pull them inward. Like this. This is the hard part, getting the legs up into the actual table. You're just going to work this double joint up until the wheel kind of lines up with the hub. So you're just going to have to fiddle with this and get this in there. This one tends to be a little better of mine. So you're going to try to start to get this lined up. And it's really fiddling it in there and getting everything lined up. And this is going to be the worst part. So getting this lined up kind of like this, so it's nice and flush, it's just a matter of fiddling with it, and it is terrible. I'm just going to tell you right now, it is really, really annoying. It's probably the worst part about this figure, so just kind of keep lining that up. Do this on this side as well. You're going to line it up, make sure it's in there good and tight. It will go in, it's just going to be a pain. I'm going to warn you right now, getting this in there is going to suck. And then you're going to want to make sure the arms are lined up proper again. And this peg is going to go into the arm. So there's a post here. Make sure that the black part on the arm is out so this port can go in and the post can go in. So it can snap into place for the front of the car. Snap that all together. Make sure that's lined up. So on this side, make sure this black peg is facing outward, so that we can get the post port in, and connect in, and make sure it's all aligned proper, like that. And just keep connecting in, pressing in, squeeze in, make sure everything's connecting proper. It is going to be a bear, it is for fidgety. Once you get that, you can put back in, make sure that the wheels are right and then we're going to move this piece back down over the back end and if it doesn't fit make sure again everything's lined up those two purple pieces need to be up in there once that goes up it will click into place like that so there we go and then we're going to put the door back on so that we're not loose so we're going to click that into place Again, 
insert the black pieces out so the door will connect onto it and there we go just make sure everything's nice and tight and aligned and there we have our car mode finally and then we're going to take her claw and break it apart and this is going to become part of her spoiler so we're going to click this on the back like that and then we're going to put this one on the back like that and then we're going to take her sword there and that is going to create her spoiler, which is pretty cool. I like that. And there we have Nightbird finally in her car mode. Now taking a look at her car mode, it's actually pretty decent. I like the design. It's just so hard to get that back end up into it, um, which is a shame. It rolls really well. Um, I love the black and the purple, the grays, the yellows. I hate the browns. The browns just ruin it. The headlights look good, the black, the gray looks good, the purple wheels are amazing. Yeah, if this was all gray, this would be fantastic. I love the sword, love how that becomes the sword. We got tail lights painted on the back of it. It's a nice, love the little tail lights back there. Love the design, it's the brown that just absolutely ruins the color. So is the Target exclusive a Jungle Mission 3 pack Nightbird from Transformers Rise of the Beasts? Something that you want in the Transformers collection. Well, if you're collecting all of the Rise of the Beasts figures, you're going to want this figure because it's Nightbird. She's a big character in the movie. If you're a Nightbird fan, you might want to get this figure because it is a pretty cool interpretation of her. Um, I think the design's okay. Transformation on this is a bear. Once you figure it out, you can get it in there, but those legs can be very, very frustrating to get in there, as you can see. And it's the color that looks terrible to me. That brown destroys the look of the character, not only the uh, character we've known from history over the past 40 years, but also the way she looks in the movie. She looked right in the movie. So I don't know if we're going to get a standalone deluxe and the proper paint job. Uh, but uh, hopefully we at least get a studio series with the right paint job because that really just does a very bad disservice to the figure, unfortunately. Other than that, I mean, it's a pretty cool little Transformer. So there she is, Nightbird from Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Hey guys, I want to give a shout out to my top subscribers and to my newest subscribers. Thank you all so much for helping grow the channel. Remember, for every 1,000 subscribers, I'll give you, the fans, a chance to win a free action figure. If you don't see your name and want to be included, like this video, add a comment down below telling me to add you, and of course, subscribe. Thanks again, and look for more videos in the future. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To watch more Ultra Maximus, click on the links to the right. Be sure to click all the things, subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell for new videos. And follow me on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below.